Yo, fine scouts and intrepid internet travelers. Welcome to my channel. I'm Josh, your binge buffoon, if you will have me. Today, Tuesday, not Sunday night, because Sunday night I went out for drinks and texted a bunch of people I love them because I have a problem. I will be watching the sixth episode of HBO's Monster Hit, which I believe is based and or inspired by some other form of entertainment. Doesn't matter. The Last of Us. Last week, we met and then abruptly had to say goodbye to Sam and Henry with Ellie, out of frustration, desperation, trying her best to save the former. His death has undoubtedly made her survivor's guilt even worse as she's now more motivated than ever to find these fireflies. The way that episode ended was as powerful a exit as I think I've ever seen, with Ellie walking away from Joel, contrasting with him walking away from her when after Tess died. Joel, on the other hand, is changing in maybe the direct opposite way that Ellie is. Uh, even though it's subtle, he's now hesitating to kill old men. Maybe because he realizes that Ellie is slowly becoming the Sam to his Henry. And he probably couldn't bear losing someone else. As we continue along this journey with Joel and Ellie and meet characters in their orbit. Characters whose stories contrast, parallel, and mirror that which the core duo faces, both emotionally, spiritually, philosophically. It's those seemingly secondary stories which propel the primary story forward. And now it's winter and we're off to Wyoming, where Joel is poised to reunite with his brother Tommy procure firefly information and or ask tommy for help in some way shape or form unless you're familiar with a certain ip who knows so yeah let's get into this before we do please like subscribe um or else you will have bad luck forever no you won't um i hate when people do that i hate when things on the internet threaten my very existence if I don't do what they want me to do and I'll do it every time because I'm I was gonna say I used to have a bunch of fortune cookie things right here because I didn't want to throw them away <laughs> they were all so nice and I didn't want to throw them away until they came true so yeah I am kind of superstitious and hopefully you are too like and subscribe all right reaction channel let's ride the coattails of other people's art real quick if if my energy seems kind of low in this, or I come off as even more of a buffoon, my brain's kind of a scrambled egg uh, today, so it is what it is. Forgive me. Based on a video. <laughs> Do we have to see this again? But the winter. Three months later. They have a cabin now? Guess so. This looks like Joel, kinda. Or maybe it's not. No, it's probably not. No, it's this guy. Whoever he is. I've seen him in a bunch of things. I know Joel's gonna meet him though, because it was in the trailer! <sighs> Trailers are such a mixed bag. The gun. Oh, he's in here already. Who the hell are you? Just someone passing through. Yeah, and he's nicer now, so you're okay. I was just talking about how he doesn't necessarily kill old men anymore. Why did you shoot him? The gun's all the way over there. You made him soup? Yeah, I did. She's really nice. Can I come down? No. Ellie. Why has she just got a gun drawn just willy-nilly? What did I just say? <laughs> Joel, come on, there's like a thousand. Who's this? Well, that's... You got a map, why you lost? You must have missed all the street signs in the enormous fucking forest. Holy. <laughs> Exactly where, and your answer better be the same as your wife's. Do you tell him the truth? Yeah. Are you telling me the truth? 
Given the circumstances, I mean, we can put much uh, faith in that, yeah. For those, yes. Well, you found a great place to hide, I guess. You and Cody? Yeah, I got close enough. It's crawling with infected. Yeah, Laramie and Wind River Reservation. Mm. Great movie, by the way, Wind River. Heartbreaking in a multitude of ways, but amazing. What about the fireflies? We get those in the summer. Not the bugs, the people. There are Obviously written by Taylor people. Sheridan, and he's just killing it right now with the Yellowstone and everything else. But yeah, Firefly is funny. It was also directed by Taylor Sheridan. I think it was his directorial debut. If your brother's west of the river, he's gone. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. He, he was in Desert Storm. You're um, scare us. And they wouldn't tell us that earlier unless they were setting him up as a survivor or badass of sorts. So sorry, sad music. I don't believe you. You don't seriously believe them? No. Joe? What are you having? Some palpitations? Joe? Okay? Joe? Shut up. It's just a reminder that if you're dead, I'm fucked. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> just the cold air. All of a sudden. Could just be anxiety and stress. Uh, to be completely honest with you, I, I get palpitations from that sort of thing all the time. And I've gone to the ER thinking I was having a heart attack. I'm not ever really. But he is older. And I'm younger than I look. I'm, maybe not. Maybe I look my age. I'm never going to tell you guys, though. I want you to keep guessing forever. I really love Bella Ramsey in this series now. He seems so comfortable Don't in the start. role now. Good. I'm starving. I should have stolen two rabbits. We can get our own rabbits. You gonna teach me how? Yeah, teach Just them. keep moving. Wow. Wow, what a shot. That's so cool. Come down from there, you're gonna break your neck. For reasons that's cool. Dissect it in the comments. Do your thing. Does it is is Ellie may be elevated morally. Is she more righteous than Joel or something? Or this is just she loves space and she's she dreams. She has an imagination. Oh, is it booze? Yep. So gross. Yeah. Yeah. They draw my blood and put it through some of their fancy machines and make a cure. I think it works that way. Then what? Like what do we do? Well it's we. Hmm. That's a good question. You can do anything you want. Hmm. Where are you going? What are you doing? An old farmhouse. Some land. A ranch. Cool. What kind? Sheep. I would raise sheep. I feel like that's setting something up down the road. Season two, perhaps? Or three? It's probably because I grew up in the QZ. Behind you, there's ocean, and ahead of you, there's a wall. Or else to look what up. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Jim Lovell. Sally Ride. Sally fucking Ride. Best astronaut name ever. I tried with Sam. Yeah. I rubbed some of my blood into his bite. I know, I know it was stupid, but I wanted to save him. Yeah. And now that want extends to everyone, right? Or... Well, I reckon it's a lot more complicated than that. Yeah. Marlene, she's a lot of things, but... She's no fool. And Joel really. When she says they can do it, they can do it. Really? I don't know. It's interesting, right? Because we've. There's so many scientists we've seen in the cold open to this show at the beginning of episode two. They've stressed the improbability of medicine or a vaccine. And just because Ellie has develop some sort of immunity or you know the fungus is mutated inside her whatever so now what nature has created this miracle inside of her and it's going to result in a cure that's able to be distributed to, to all I, oh man they can try i'm not saying there's it's not possible but and i kept watch like you taught me to what can i say man i'm a natural huh. hmm. Wake me up next time. Yes, sir. The river of death. Still no people. Fine. Hmm. 
Wow. I really like how the director's using space in this episode. Not, but like, showing off where they are and the distance between them and that sort of thing. I don't know, never mind. I told you, I'm not in at the top of my game in regards to art articulation today. Damn. You're no Will Livingston. Yeah, yeah, but who is? So that made electricity? Yeah. Don't ask me, I don't have a clue. Mm. Yeah. I know what it does. I don't know how it works. Where'd that come from? I have to imagine these are the people from uh, Tommy's settlement. I feel like that's probably Tommy's wife. You've been near infected? There's no infected out here. The hell there ain't. Well, I haven't seen any. Last chance for a bullet. They, ha they use... Infected, he will oh, they... And he will rip you up. They use dogs, I mean, I guess. Oh, what... They will, the do, she will smell, right? Because it is in her body. Now her. Uh, yeah, this isn't gonna, she's gonna smell. Because it's in her, she's just immune. What now? Just be like, I'm Joel Miller! Are you related to Tommy Miller by any chance? <laughs> Oh, that's weird. That's weird. I guess, whatever. Just looking for my brother. It's all, nothing more. Oh, she's going back. I have a husband who has a brother. Are you that brother? What's your name? Yeah, okay, here we go. Joel. Yeah. Yeah, so we have a settlement, and our king's name is Tommy. I think before the outbreak, he was kind of a... Uh... A lost soul. Now he leads us all. The directionless have all the direction. When the world ends. For the aimless. I don't know. Whatever, man. I'm talking on my ass today. Oh, man. It's like the world before, right? Well, there he is. Tommy! Tommy! Brother! I can't remember if you had a mustache before, but it looks great! I love the hairdo as well. This is like when Jon Snow, uh, Sansa came to Castle Black after all that time. Ah oh, man, here we go. Give it a hug. <laughs> Give us a hug, brother. <laughs> oh, he's like, I didn't, I've used several hugs, me. I came here to save you. Don't worry, that'll come. <laughs> <laughs> I came here to save you. <laughs> Dude's literally in heaven, at least uh, by today's standards in this universe. This is fucking amazing. Sorry. Yeah, she says Stella. fuck a lot. Let's mind our manners. But so do I, whatever. What? What's wrong with you? What about her manners? She... I, I mean, there's no way I could know who that is. I don't know. I think maybe y'all got a little off on the wrong foot. Who's gonna have our guys kill us? Well, you gotta be real careful about who we let in this place. But it's all bark. We're just trying to scare off those who might want to try it. He looks like a Dina I don't, or something. I don't know what her name is, though. Billy. They say that you leave dead bodies around? Those are the people who tried us. A bad reputation doesn't mean you're bad. Mm. Not That's true. Us, at least. It's a look. Would it be nice to have a moment here, maybe just for family? She is family. Well, uh, Maria is family, actually. Joel, say congrats. <laughs> Congratulations. Congrats. Give him okay. You draw power from a dam. Got that working a couple years ago. But it actually fucking works. It does. Hey Joel, check it. <laughs> hey sheep. Who would have thought? Oh, it's I'm on the council. Nice. Democratically elected. Nice. Serving 300 people, including children. Nice. Everyone pitches in. We rotate patrols, food prep, repairs, hunting, harvest. Collective ownership. So, uh, communism. Nah. Nah, I didn't like that. I mean, it is that. Literally. This is a communist. Yeah. We're communists. I guess it is. Could do worse? Oh, trust me, we have been. We've been doing fine. 
I mean, I guess. I didn't see those three months, but it looked you looked touch and go. Yeah, okay. Joe. You'll be fine. Yeah, I guess I guess she probably hasn't been apart from him in, in months, right? So that would feel weird. Doesn't seem like you age much. You on the other hand. Oh Jesus. It's gonna happen to you too, brother. Baby brother. Working on raising some hogs. Some good whiskey. Distilled yourself. Once we get bacon, I mean, what's bacon even and booze. Sounds like a trip up north. That's what we do in Wisco. We trip up north, we cook breakfast, with booze. So how's Tess? We do all the stuff. She's fine. It's like he doesn't want to tell anybody. She's the daughter of some firefly. Well, that's not true, but trying to find her family somewhere mm. out here. I mean, he's going to have to tell him, right, by the end of this Fireflies. episode, the truth. Uh, they got a base down at the University of Eastern yeah. Colorado. It is severely fucked up between you mm. and there. Yeah, I can't go. Well, come on. <laughs> I made it across the country. The two of us can make it from here to Colorado. Come with. After I ditched the Fireflies, Marie and her crew found me. And all they ask is that I follow their rules. I'm your brother. Yeah, I'm he's a, a joiner, right? He's a follower. Fuck. They're very protective of yeah. this place. If a good fucking reason, yeah. I mean, folks find out we're up here. No, I heard. Is that what I am? Am I the wrong people? Joe. I mean, maybe you are, Joel. Those things that you judge me for. I did those things to keep us alive. We did yeah, those we things. Did. We. They weren't things. Murdered people. I saw a clip from this preview. We survived the only way we knew how. But there were other ways. Yeah. We just weren't any good at True. it. True. I mean, but diplomacy is difficult in this world. I'm going to be a father. Oh, fuck. Marie is a few months long now. So I just gotta be more careful. Fair enough, fair enough. Holy fuck! To be honest, I'm scared. Well, yeah. Of how does this make Joel feel? But I don't know. I feel like I'd be a good dad. You would. Just tell me you would. <clears throat> fuck. Fuck, fun, man. man. You know what he means by that. I yeah, because he we'll thinks you can't that. take care of yourself, right? That's... He thinks, uh, yeah. He thinks he thinks he's the one. Uh, Just because life stops doesn't for mean you, stop for me. Powers has to. Doesn't mean it has to stop for me. Right? Yeah. There's envy there. There's bitterness there. There's nothing worse than feeling like you lost. Oh fuck me. For whatever reason, you know, I thought he was gonna try and pawn Ellie off on Tommy because he was starting to feel like I can't go through what I went through again. But this conversation that they had, right? Him finding out that. What's going on with this? Is this is this a panic attack? Is that what's happening to him, or is he is does he have like a heart problem? Oh, and then the hair reminds him of Sarah. Oh, and that jaw, dude. Right, but I said I thought he was gonna pawn Ellie off on Tommy because she was starting to remember remind him of everything she's lost, and he didn't want to go through that again. But this conversation, uh, you know, with Tommy having a kid on the way again, reminded him of everything he lost. I'm across the street. Some random person's leaving you notes in a bedroom. That's fun. <laughs> or maybe it's just Joel or Maria. I don't know. Oh, Gross. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably Maria. Definitely not Joel. Maria. Sarah? Did she lose a kid too? Oh wait, did it say Kevin is like the due date for Kevin? I actually didn't look at the date for Kevin, sorry. Who's been cutting your hair? Uh, world class salons. <laughs> Let me get my scissors. Oh, whoa, no. It was just like your This job is nice, some maternal action for Ellie. No, I was an assistant district attorney. Oh, wow. Makes sense that you'd be able to, or were elected a leader, or onto the council. You were looking at the little memorial oh, topic. Oh, so yeah, she was. I'm sorry about your kids. This is it's where okay. she's going to find out that... Kid. Okay, yeah. So she lost Kevin's... Sarah was Joel's daughter, Joel. yeah. I guess that explains him a little. A little? <laughs> there are clearly things you don't know about Joel. Oh, like how he used to kill people? I know about that. And Tommy did it too. Are you worried about him? Tommy was following Joel. Okay, let's not... Fuck, I don't think we should be de demonizing Joel this much right now. It is a cruel world. Rick Grimes did the same shit. And John Bernthal was right. Be careful who you put your faith in. The only people who can betray us are the ones we trust. 
Where are we going? The movies. Oh, the movies. Nice. What the fuck was John Bernthal's character's name in The Walking Dead? I can't remember right now. Shane. Hated that motherfucker, but he was right. The kids will be watching movies tonight. I was moving into the other room. She seen it. A lot of kids. And Allie's just looking for kids. You guys have more to talk about. I figured I'd save you the trouble. Give him some nice new boots. Nice. Or different. Probably not new. They look new. I know you're happy for me. It's just... It's complicated for right. you. Right. It's dangerous. But it's nothing you can't handle. Just prepare and do what you do. You've had people go that way and come back. All of them. What is this? She's immune. There we go. From the beginning. I love Gabriel Luna as Tommy. I, there's something about what he's doing with the role. I don't know. He's just like, he's so emotive in a way that it, it, it draws you in. We made it as far as KC. And then, you know, she saved my life there. From another kid. Five years ago, I would have destroyed mm. But she had to shoot him to save me. Mm. 14 years old because I was too slow and too fucking deaf to hear him coming and today I thought that dog was gonna tear her apart because it smelled something mm. on her so did I I couldn't he is panicking you know, this is anxiety I couldn't think of anything he's afraid he just... for the first time oh, yeah it's like it's like what Bill said right I wasn't afraid before I met you Joel wasn't afraid before he met Ellie Bill wasn't afraid before he met Frank lately there are these moments where the fear comes up out of nowhere yeah. and my heart feels like it stopped what kind of dreams i don't know i can't remember wow i just know that when Terrified. i wake up i've lost something it's all i've ever done it's failure again and again you want me to take her i'm just gonna get her killed yeah or no. i knew this was coming he doesn't want to fail her i mean it's why you took off on me right to make up for the things we did. Well, here's your chance to bring your kid into a better world. I'll take her out of dawn. I didn't think we'd get that much insight into what Joel's thinking and feeling, but wow. She's gonna tell Maria, he's gonna tell Maria now and she's gonna be pissed. She's gonna tell me he's leaving, you know. We just came back to tell you how much we enjoyed it. She knows something's up. Damn, this house looks like his house back in the day. Is this really all they had to worry about? Yeah. Boys move. It's bizarre. Yeah. Listen, uh, Why are you here? I came here to talk to you. No, why are you still here? What exactly did you hear? I have to leave her, you have to take okay. her. He knows the area better than I do. Do you give a shit about me or not? Of course I do. Then what are you so afraid of? Maria told me about Sarah and... No. You have no idea what loss is. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody fucking except for you! So don't tell me that I'd be safe with somebody else because the truth is, I would just be more scared. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. On our several ways. But at least you got the night to think about it. That's plenty of time to change your mind. You came here to say goodbye or something? No. I came here to steal one of these horses and go. You deserve a choice. I still think you'd be better off with Tommy. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a place for you here. Both of you. Counting on it. You deserve a choice. I agree. She does. She does. In in every situation. Uh, under... Yeah. What's it up? 
Slide right. You're flinching. The target's too small. I made it bigger than I should have. It Literally, you, you should be thinking about pulling the trigger more than aiming. Just breathe. People overthink the aim, and that's when they how they fuck up. A deep breath in, slow breath out. You squeeze the trigger like you right. Mm. Gentle, steady, nice and slow. You gonna shoot this thing or get it pregnant? You did. <laughs> so the way they ran stuff in Jackson, was that how things used to be? No. Back then there were basically two main ways of looking at things. Some people wanted to own mm. everything. Mm -hmm. And some people didn't want anyone to own anything. <laughs> That's else. true. And neither one works. Neither, I just did right. my job. That's fucking smart way. That's a good that's a great way to simplify it. The contractor. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we were cool. Nice. Aww. Uh, I want to rest my face on someone's back. The other team? Oh, right. football. It's called a turnover. Turnover. But if you make it to 10 yards, then. Oh, no, are they going to get jumped by Raiders? Well, how about that? Made it in five days. You guys have been on that horse for five days? Fuck. Yeah. Still time to find right. out. Right. Still time to find out. The contractor. University of Eastern Colorado. Oh, the big horns. Science building. Looks like a big mirror. You can't miss it. People would live here and, like, what, go to classes and stuff? Yup. Even though they were adults. Sort of adults. Sort of yeah. adults. I think it was just as much about partying and finding. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to do with their lives. Right. Right. Imagine the abstract concept of having options in this world. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> Shut up. Well, you're singing for me later. I'm gonna save the fucking world, man. That's the least you can do. <laughs> Fair enough. Are those monkeys? Yeah, hey, but don't life. fuck with them. I'm pretty sure they're infected or something. Look it. Um. It's either a raider or a monkey or something. I don't know. That's where they went. All the pins lead there. I like city. Hey, Maris. No. Uh oh. <laughs> they just all have bats and shit. <laughs> the most NPC equipped. Just, just straight up, they look like goons. The most goon-looking people I've ever seen. <laughs> Go to sleep. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. I think he's dead. What happened? Oh, fuck. What is that, a bat? No, what the fuck is that? Oh, the... The, uh, the weaponized handle of a bat? Guys, can you stop and tell us who you are and, like, who you loved and who you lost and who you killed for real quick? Joe? Joe? Joe, no, no, no! Shit! I don't know where the fuck I'm going. What the fuck I'm gonna do? Joe. Joe, please. I'm taking a ride with my best friend. <laughs> um, yeah. I lied in the title of this video. I mean, I think. I don't know what I'm going to title this video. So maybe something along the lines of Gamer Doesn't Mention Game. Finally. Uh, so, yeah, I apologize for kind of trolling slash playing like I didn't know what the game was in this reaction. It's probably annoying. And I probably censored myself a little bit. So maybe that was disappointing. But I'm not going to do that, especially not in this review. I'm going to talk about the game. The truth is, I probably let the comments section of last week's episode get in my head a little bit where some people enjoyed 
my whole this was in the game, this wasn't in the game sort of thing. Others were annoyed by it. But yeah, I, I, I'm cool now. I'm just doing me. If you don't like that, the, the game comparisons, just, yeah, go to watch other reactions. Honestly, I've mostly been watching first time non gamer reactions because those are the ones I find the most interesting. I know the game. I don't need to, I'm comparing that enough in my own head, you know? So yeah, I'm going to compare the show to the game at times in this review because I must. Because part of what makes this adaptation interesting is the changes, or any adaptation in that, for that matter, is the fact that they're adaptations. So why not explore the changes they've undergone in the journey to the silver or small screen? For the record, I've never wanted this to be a one-to-one -one recreation. All friends of source material ever want is for the adaptation to, to do right by what they love. And as we know from The Last of Us, love is a tricky thing. Uh, that involves a lot of fear, bitterness, narcissism, nitpicking, self-seriousness, and tears. I don't care how it gets done as long as it gets done and it's getting done in this series. This episode, Kin, directed by Jasmilla Zibonic was an absolutely beautiful banger. No pun intended. Banger, kin, no. Reading. That song that plays before we cut to black, by the way, that cover of Depeche Mode's Never Let Me Down is sung by Jessica Mason, Craig Mason's daughter. So shout out Jessica. I thought she did an amazing job with it. If she's not a professional singer, she has probably a good chance of... Uh, Fulfilling the dream Joel never could. Obviously, it's the same 80s song that played at the end of episode one, one signifying trouble. And here we're ending on the kind of trouble that is essentially Joel's biggest fear, which he expresses wholeheartedly in this episode. Actually, I, I might as well try this. Hey, Craig or Neil, can I be a bandit or a maybe like WLF or something in season two? You can beat me up for saying anything negative about this show or the second game. Okay, but now I'm going to rewind to the beginning of this episode where winter came early, uh, but right on time, but differently, but three months after where we were last week uh, because we met that old native couple, Graham Green and Elaine Miles, who I love dearly. <laughs> Just these people who have been isolated from the, the dysfunctional affairs of the larger world since even before the outbreak. And they're fine, for the most part. They're living their lives in relative peace. I mean, sure, they have to hunt and protect their land, but that's commonplace in this world. And it's been, it, it's been commonplace for hundreds of years, thousands. They're not concerned with a war with Fedra or any other factions or anything like that. The scene with them, Joel and Ellie, is not only fun because it gives the actors a lot of room to dance in, but it gives viewers their first look at like the, the good life in this post-apocalyptic world, the first look in this episode. And it's probably the good, I, I should have put good in quotations, it's probably the good life that Joel would prefer if what he said about herding sheep holds any weight, even though he'd rather play guitar and sing songs like Jessica Mason, when, him telling Ellie that when they were at the University of Eastern Colorado, by the way, means the walls are officially down. But the sheep herding life is probably one he would prefer to Jackson. Although I think he downplayed how he impressed he was by Tommy and Maria's settlement for other reasons. Uh, but we'll get there. I feel like I'm going to say a lot in this video. <laughs> But yeah, it's a relatively calm interaction, after which we see Joel have his first panic attack, or at least it's the first one that we see. Maybe he's worried about Tommy, or maybe he's just starting to actually picture a life outside of surviving, because this episode's concerned with that. I literally say surviving because I, th I picture Joel saying it, or I hear Joel saying it, <laughs> like without a G. Throughout the episode, he's constantly pushing, or at least definitely in the first half he's pushing away this idea of an idyllic life because if you have nothing to lose you have nothing to fear when he's in jackson and he sees all the people living their lives around christmas time which makes it even worse 
most wholesome time of year if you're into that sort of thing, you sickos. It further unveils this side of himself that he's tucked away with all the pain. His, I guess you could say his human side, and he just can't bear it. Also, obviously, we never see the inside of Jackson in the first game. And they nailed it here. Every set in this show, and that just in this episode alone, you know, from a Jackson to the University of Eastern Colorado, it's all true to form. And the Wyoming Wilderness, which isn't a set, it's just lucky. It's so beautiful. The scenery, the cinematography, all of it's set to Gustavo's score in this episode. You just want to take it in. The production value of this show. The cabin scene was a super effective way to start this episode, in my opinion, because it it stresses this overarching titular theme of kin while introducing this newer side of Joel. And this is where I'm going to compare Pedro Pascal's Joel to Troy Baker's Joel. Uh, sad Joel versus angry Joel. Because <laughs> there's a big difference. And it's a fascinating difference. Everything Pedro does with the character in this episode, everything he acts his ass off with, it's all there in video game Joel. It's just buried much, much deeper. Probably a lot. It's just a lot more subtle. I sort of look at video game Joel the way I, I think about Ernest Hemingway's iceberg theory, where extra details, or in this case, emotional breakdowns, aren't explicit, and in some cases are eliminated, because the reader, the viewer, the gamer, inherently know it. So I totally get how the larger-than-life, unstoppable, Grin and Barrett Joel is sometimes more appealing and more fascinating for reasons not limited to badassery. However, as someone who's struggled with borderline crippling anxiety in my own life, in the real world, and, and I think this series prides itself on realism, I know how much it sucks when someone tells you, I thought you'd be stronger than this, or I thought you were stronger than this. So there's no way in fuck I'm doing that to Joel Miller, saying that or complaining about it. I think the decision to bring all this out in the show not only makes dramatic sense, but makes sense for the character because, well, he's older and weaker here. They aged him up for the show. And I think the older you get, the more ex existential you feel, feel, right? Because, yeah. So some gamers may even prefer this version of Joel because he's more relatable and we get to see how low he got. So for me, the most powerful scene in this drama-heavy episode is without a doubt the scene between Joel and Tommy. In fact, all of their interactions, maybe even their relationship in this series is just better than the game. While Joel does get angry, kind of, at Tommy in this episode, because he gets angry at him in the game, it's more because he's bitter and jealous of the life that Tommy gets to have. By the way, Tommy doesn't have a son or have a son on the way in the game. And I think it's a brilliant addition here because it exasperates Joel's character arc. And when he just admits to Tommy, after working through all that, that he feels inadequate and he can't afford his self-doubt to lead to another failure equitable to Sarah's death, I mean, it's heartbreaking. On the other hand, a video game Joel just tells Tommy, I need this, and then shoves him before telling him, you survived because of me. And I love that too. There's just more explored here. And pay we Pedro needs that Emmy. Then, after that mic drop worthy scene between the two brothers talking about dreams they don't remember but always feel, comes almost a direct adaptation of the farmhouse uh, scene from the game. The iconic farmhouse scene. No. The monumental, unbelievably memorable farmhouse scene, which I've watched way too many times. Yeah, they did good. They did good in this. They, um, they did a good job. But it definitely didn't hit me as hard. It's strange because most of the dialogue's the same. Hell, the fucking set's basically the same. But overall, it's different. And I think it comes down to angry Joel versus sad Joel. I'm not going to talk too much about this. But the scene in the game is much more of an argument. And it comes after the argument with Tommy. So that same energy leads into the conversation with Ellie. And you really don't like Joel very much after that scene in the game. And it's just played differently here. And you you don't have all this context about how he feels. I mean, you know it. 
but you didn't have this big emotional scene beforehand. And for me, it was like going in from one to the other. It's just different energy. I don't know. It's like I said, it's just me. I know that that probably was amazing to so many people and they acted their ass off. I, I don't think that the only reason the scene was different in the game was because of gameplay. The yes, that played a part, but the different characterizations do as well. Um, this And this isn't an argument one versus the other. I'm just talking differences here because they're what are on the top of my mind. And, and I feel like, albeit maybe I'm misguided, I feel like it adds value to whatever the fuck I'm doing right now in front of this camera. I'm totally cool with the fact that the scene didn't grip me close and then it abuse my abandonment issues like it did when I held a PlayStation controller. It's always better the first time around. Or painful, I guess. Or painful. Besides, I think it's almost impossible for to live up to the same feeling I experienced initially with the game, especially when the dialogue's that close, because in your mind you're just immediately going to be picturing when you heard those lines initially the first time, right? It's impossible not to compare, and that sort of takes you out of the moment. I've heard other gamers say this, but it's definitely a more enjoyable experience when the show does something the game, or doesn't try to replicate the game too closely, because it, you're able to live in it more. And I know coming from me, it's a lose-lose situation, right? Or catch-22, because it's going to inevitably, I think, in most cases fall short of the original when it tries to replicate those big moments those iconic moments but gamers and fans are also going to be upset if they don't include those big moments so you just can't win especially not with people like me i expect that with time it'll grow on me and i'll appreciate it for what it is i do appreciate what it's doing but i still feel these i still feel and think these things so i'm gonna say them fuck it Actually, this scene at the end of this episode, when Joel falls off his horse, which he does in the game, I think is a perfect example of how they're winning. Because even though it was similar, the dialogue was different, the location, it wasn't like, oh, game, it, my gamer brain was able to turn off. And maybe it's what Bella did with that, because the energy she brought felt so much more organic than some scenes. I've also listened to, I think it was inside the episode, after this episode, where Bella Ramsey, Neil Druckmann, at least those two were talking about the pressure of that bedroom scene and how she couldn't sleep the night before because she understood how how big of a moment it was in this story. And I get that. Like I totally get that. Um, but the but the the magnitude of the moment for people who are gamers and stuff, yeah, that's gonna distract. I'm still enjoying the series. I'm just saying this shit. Relax. I actually really love this series. I do. I really do. I promise I do. I loved this episode too. Like that last scene where Bella is saying, please, Joel. It's so, she does such a good job vocally. And I don't mean her accent. It's like that wail she gave at the end of five when Henry shot himself. Like, fuck, you can feel that. You feel it. I felt that at the end of this episode too. Yeah. Like everyone's praising Pedro Pascal for his work in this episode. Bella was on par. I know that jo I know that Pedro shed more tears and that scene was amazing with Tommy. Also Gabriel Luna. Dude. The things he was doing in this episode were understated and brilliant, I think. I love him as Tommy. I fucking love him as Tommy. This episode spends so much time exploring Joel's biggest fear, right? And then it comes true at the end of the episode. And Ellie, her greatest fear is ending up alone. She's kind of alone right now. And she has no one out to rely on. And she's going to have to figure out who she is in this world. And like, she's in the heart of this world and its brutality. It's dangerous where they are right now. And then all of the moments with Pedro and Bella on screen were amazing. They're so good together. And in that moment with where Joel's in the stable and he goes, you deserve a choice. And Ellie doesn't hesitate at all. I mean, that was great. I'm not really, cause I know I've, I've sort of, there's multiple moments in my reactions where I, I sort of say, remember I said this. Um, cause there's a lot of foreshadowing in this show. I'm not going to really discuss how this whole choice line is foreshadowing for people who don't know what's coming. 
Uh, but I will say, as someone who knows where this story is going, not in not only based upon my knowledge of the first game, but the second game, it just feels like there's a lot of hammering home of themes and a lot of foreshadowing, and it's starting to feel redundant. Like, there's four moments in this episode I can think of off the top of my head where I was like, oh my god, they're they're literally just telling us mentioning this so that when this happens later it's not going to be as much as of a surprise or uh and then there was monologues in the last episode and it's kind of over and over and over again and if you're just watching this show for the first time you're not going to notice at all you might looking back like down the road uh but right now you probably don't notice at all so this is just me and like i said i'm viewing this through a different lens I think I know why they're doing it. I really hope I'm wrong. Because the second game received a lot of backlash. It was very divisive. It doesn't matter how you felt about that story, but it did receive a lot of backlash. Like, it was an epic amount of backlash on the internet. But if they lay out themes and do enough foreshadowing in Season 1 to set up the things that happen in Season 2 and possibly alter the effect that the ending of the first game such ending of season one has on the viewer and and characters it can soften the blow and make the reaction to the story of part two or in this case season two and season three less dramatic and you're going to say well they didn't even know a season two was coming it got renewed after episode one i'm sure they assumed and it's not to say this isn't smart. It makes the story more consi consistent if that's what they're doing. And it probably is because now they have the whole picture of what's going on, right? Just ignore me on that rant. Not a big deal. Uh, I just don't... It, I think it, it raises more questions for me, which is exciting too. Like, I, I think it's super interesting um, and it makes watching this such an experience. Like, I don't necessarily even know where this story is going right now. And that's exciting. All I know are the brushstrokes. Because there's so many things that are different. But spiritually, it is the same. So, for now. Who knows? Who knows what they're going to do? I mean, honestly, they're... Yeah. Um, what else? I'm glad we got to see Ellie and Maria's conversation. Which is only alluded to in the game. And it really did feel organic. The way it was set up. The way Ellie found out about Joel's daughter. But I don't necessarily agree with Maria's perspective. I mean, it sounds like her and her family got set up in this settlement. Uh, maybe they had to fight for it. Uh, I think they said it was a gated community they sort of expanded on. Sounds like, I don't want to reference The Walking Dead again, but it sounds like an Alexandria situation where they don't necessarily know what's out there. I mean, Joel and Tommy are out there playing on grounded mode and, and uh, Maria's just on easy mode. I mean, to me, it doesn't even really make sense that Tommy says to Joel, uh, there's another way. We just weren't that good at it. I mean, yeah, there's another way when you're set up like you are in Jackson. Not when your family members are getting gunned down by the military. I mean, it just doesn't seem like a realistic take. Like, why condemn Joel for what he did to help your husband survive? Joel protects his kin, right? Name the, That was the title of the episode. Just like the people of Jackson protect Jackson. Joel's going to do whatever it takes to protect his kin. And the people of Jackson don't even let family members radio people to tell them they're okay. Tommy didn't have to tell Joel where he was. Just that, hey, I'm good. Don't fucking come across the country looking for me. I just find, I find it hard to believe that everyone in Jackson has never killed innocent people. And they just all have clean hands. It's not possible. And Joel says please and thank you. Come on. Being vague and really not spoilery. I get that they're foreshadowing what Joel is capable of. But I don't believe that anyone is necessarily innocent in this world. And if they are, they won't be forever. Because um, there's, no, there's no law, not, not nationally. I think my biggest fear with this show is if this show makes any one group feel utterly in the right, that will lose me. That will lose me completely ambiguity in stories like this especially shows or stories titled the last of us when it's this contemplation of humanity at its best at its worst but more importantly the morally gray area ambiguity is important and if they don't make certain things a topic of debate i think it loses its 
Yeah. That said, as for all of my gripes, I'm definitely not saying that I'm right about anything I just said. Because it's not about being right. These are just the things I think and feel um, when I'm watching the show. Again, The Last of Us in general is about ambiguity. Because I truly believe that everyone comes at things from a different angle. And I, I'm entirely cool with people disagreeing with me. I, I want you to. That's what makes this fun. But the bottom line is this show is best case scenario for this IP. I know that. You know that. Everyone knows that. It's meticulously crafted. It's beautiful. It's well written. Acted. The, in, the production is incredible. And it's worked on by people who clearly love this story and the work that they do. Well, that's not necessary. I mean, maybe somebody hates their job. Everyone, there's always people who hate their job. So I can't say that. <laughs> uh, most of them probably really kind of like what they do. And if, and if I say things feel rushed or anything like that at times, it's just because I have all these memories of more in my head and like dreams we can't remember. I just worry uh, they'll be lost forever and I'll never be able to relive them again, even though I want to. And that's kind of how nostalgia works. It's not rational. And people prey on that a lot, especially in the entertainment industry. I'm not talking about this, though. I don't think this show is preying on nostalgia one bit. I think it's uh, catering to nostalgia in so many ways. Oh, damn. I didn't want anyone to see my laundry while I recorded this. Usually I shut that. Yeah, that's all I have. Big love to everyone who's bored enough to join me. Everyone who's put up with me will put up with me has yet to put up with me let me know your thoughts in the comments drive me off this platform if you must otherwise like subscribe dislike for cathartic reasons <sighs> drink water stay young and remember don't be an idiot be a buffoon peace